Good morning, good afternoon, and good, good evening, depending on your location and your time zone. We're, we're broadcasting live from Tokyo, Japan, where our university, Shibata Institute of Technology, is. Now it is 3.30 p.m. our time, and I hope you can see us live through the Zoom system or Facebook. Please feel to drop us a line on Facebook, or you can also comment through the Zoom chat box. Now, welcome to the ATUNet Virtual University Presidents Forum 2020. This is going to be a series three, and we have about 150 participants registered from 25 different countries all around the world. We're very excited to have you here, and we'd also like to thank ATUNet members, especially UTM, for cooperating and supporting this forum. I am Yui Horiguchi from the International Office at SIT and will be the MC for today. So before starting a forum and welcoming the wonderful speakers, let me explain a little bit about this event. For series three, we chose the theme reigniting international mobility through global partnerships because this forum aims to strengthen the global partnership between Asian technical universities during the unstable COVID-19 situation that has been affecting our lives and changing our lives for several months. Based on this theme, today's event will mainly consist of speeches by professors from Thailand, Poland, and Japan. We also have a keynote speech from the chief director for university reform at Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. So, first of all, I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Takumi Miyoshi, Deputy President and the Director of the Center for International Programs at SIT, to give you some welcome remarks. Dr. Miyoshi, can you begin whenever you're ready? Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, professors, staffs, involved persons, students, and all participants. Welcome to ATUNet Virtual University Presidents Forum 2020, Series 3. I'm Takumi Miyoshi, Deputy President and Director of Center for International Programs. I'd like to address a few words as opening remarks. ATUNet, Asia Technological University Network, is a strategic international alliance launched in August 2016 and shared by University Technology Malaysia, UTM. Shibaro Institute of Technology is one of the founding member universities of ATUNet. University Presidents Forum is UTM's signature annual event and it was scheduled to be held in November. However, the world has completely changed since this March due to coronavirus infection. In place of this face-to-face -face program, ATUNet decided to cooperatively organize Virtual University Presidents Forum in three series. The series one was hosted by UTM on July 15th the title was Embracing the New Norm, Leadership, Values, and the Skills. The Series 2 was entitled with Building Academic Resilience in the Post-COVID-19 World, hosted by UTHM, University Tung Hussein on Malaysia, on August 12th. And today, we are very honored to host the final series of this forum. Shibara Institute of Technology is proud to welcome all the today's participants to the forum. We are still in the hard situation of COVID-19 pandemic and no one knows when it will end and the things return to normal. However, through six months of experience after the strong influence of COVID-19, 
we have not only faced many problems and challenges, but also suddenly obtained a lot of knowledge and solutions. As director of Center for International Programs of Shibaga Institute of Technology, I'd like to introduce some examples in our university. Let me share the screen. Can you see it? The first slide shows the transition of the outbound exchange students. You can easily imagine what happened in 2020. It drops down to zero. Next slide shows the transition of the inbound students. Yes, it goes down also, but fortunately to one quarter of last year. Some students could enter Japan before the closure of the border and others continue to stay from 2019. We have been stumbling around in the dark, but started online exchange programs. In SIT, similar to your universities, all lectures in the spring semester were served online and the global PBL programs have been also conducted online. We proudly accepted foreign students to take our programs from their home countries. UTM and the KMUTD, members of the ATU net, also kindly accepted to receive Shibaura's students. Taking this opportunity, I'd like to express our gratitude. This summer, we launched two online English learning programs with the collaboration of University of Guam, USA, and the FT, FPT University, Vietnam. The third batch of FPT's program is still running now, but these programs seem to be highly valued by students who took the programs. These are the subjective evaluations by 25 students after taking the program of University of Guam. The program might be very well organized, but many students felt satisfaction with even online English program, and their English skills seem to be improved. The results were beyond our expectation. It's time to take action. Reigniting international mobility through global partnerships. This is the title of today's forum. Let's break out of the current st stagnation, reignite our international mobility, and develop new normal exchange programs together. Let me introduce today's program shortly. Today, we have two keynotes and three roundtable talks. The first keynote speaker is Mr. Kuniaki Sato, Chief Director for University Reform and Director of Office for International Planning, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology Japan. The title is The Turning Period of internationalization of higher education and educational exchange. The second keynote speaker is Professor Dr. Masato Murakami, President of Shibara Institute of Technology, Japan. The title is Higher Education in a Buka World. The first roundtable speaker is Professor Dr. Masahiro Inoue, Vice President of Shibara Institute of Technology, Japan. The title is 
transformation of engineering education in COVID-19 pandemic and the future prospects. The second round table speaker is Associate Professor Dr. Pornapit Darasawan, Vice President for Internationalization, King Monkut University of Technology, Hungary, Thailand. The title is Enhancing Internationalization at Home Through Virtual Mobility. Finally, the third round table speaker is Professor Dr. Janusz Schmidt, Eurotherm Committee President and Head of Department of Fundamental Research in Energy Engineering, AGH University of Science and Technology, Poland. The title is Scientific Cooperation for Reinforcing Future Security Under and After COVID-19 Pandemic. Through the ATN Net Virtual University Presidents Forum, why don't you share our knowledge to each other, reignite the collaboration and the cooperation with each other, and build a new relationship that enhances each other, even in new normal era. Are you ready to turn on your ignition? Let's enjoy the forum. Thank you very much. Dr. Miyoshi, thank you very much for brief briefing the co content. So now we will start inviting the speakers one by one. But before that, I would like to make some announcements before. As shown on the screen, uh, please note that the recording of the forum content is not allowed. And uh, secondly, we are planning to have a QA session and questions, comments, chats are always welcomed. In order to make it as effective and precise as possible, please make sure to write your name, which university you belong to, and to whom you would like to ask your question. Due to time limitations, we can only accept questions from the Zoom audience, but comments are welcome from the Facebook audience as well. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. So now we will now present the two keynote speeches. First of all, please welcome Mr. Kuniaki Sato, the Chief Director for University Reform at Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. Mr. Sato, can you be begin whenever you're ready? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, hello and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Well, uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, and also, I would like to thank uh, Pre President Murakami and Professor Inoue and all the staff members of uh, Shibara Institute for arranging such a wonderful forum today. Thank you very much. Well, uh, today's, uh, the theme of the today's forum is reigniting uh, international mobility through global partnerships. While talking about global partnerships, I be strongly believe that the, the in, in, it's, it's be getting, becoming very, very important in such an unprecedented time because we all are not sure yet what is the best path for the administrators and faculty members and also students to sustain our situation and campus situation and education situation and also make uh, develop our uh, educational circumstances. So uh, such, uh, having, having such an opportunity to share uh, the challenges and practices among the all participants and, and think about you know, what, what is the best way for us in the future is very, very important. Well, let me start out my slide. Uh, let, me, let me share the Hold on a second, please. Sorry, that can can we hold on a second, please? Okay, 
Well, uh, the, this slide shows you the, the development of internationalization of Japanese higher education, but this is before COVID-19. As you can see, the mobility, both inbound and outbound uh, for Japan has been increasing. And the uh, Japanese government has been promoting and pushing the back of the universities to promote the international mobility in a variety of ways, such as uh, giving the funding programs, so-called inter-university exchange program. And also where we uh, prepared uh, a huge amount of scholarships for both outbound and inbound students. And we, we also selected a very, very uh, uh, enthusiastic university for uh, internationalization as top global university project. And we selected 37 universities and actually Shibala Tech is one of them now. And so, uh, so far the development in internationalization of Japanese higher education has been succeeded. And now we face the COVID-19. And this is a university policies for the next semester, which, which is a fall semester. And if you see the left side of the slide, this is a class style that uh, the university are planning now for the fall semester. And almost all universities plan to conduct face-to-face -face classes in the next semester. And 80% of them are planning to use hybrid. And the ratio of the face-to-face -face classes, talking about this 80%, out of this 80% of the universities, about 60% of them will offer uh, more than 50% of their classes in face-to-face -face style. So uh, you can see that uh, university education will be becoming uh, quite uh, normal from the next semester. And this is an impact of COVID-9, especially in the initial stages. And uh, the, the field that we have here, a huge impact, we received a huge impact uh, was at the in international mobility and in the left side in the middle as you can see international student exchanges almost none of new international students couldn't come and some students were unable to return to their home countries and new dispatches of Japanese students by government scholarships had been temporarily suspended and uh, because of the close closure of the, uh, the places and uh, like a restaurants and all the places in the town the places that students can work for the part-time job were also, also closed. So students, quite many students, faced crisis of continuing their studies. So what we did as a government uh, 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 did for the countermeasures is first we provided 10 billion yen uh, sub, uh, under the supplemental budget, and we made uh, quite many rules and regulations more flexible for the international students to be able to receive uh, and apply and receive the scholarships. And also actually we, we have a rule and a regulation for the number of credits uh, of granted by the online classes, but we took the regulation out for that kind of uh, emergency uh, measure. And so university could uh, offer all the classes through online. And talking about entry of new foreign nationals. Well, uh, the, now all foreigners with status of residence can re-enter Japan starting from September 1st. And visa holders can re-enter Japan without special circumstances like humanitarian consideration starting from September 1st. And good news is uh, entry of new international students. In total, uh, uh, it's still under consideration and we are still working and negotiating within the government. But the good news is new entry of government sponsored scholarship is now started from the end of August. So the, the gate to study in Japan is now opening up gradually. And sharing the uh, good practices and challenges uh, under such uh, circumstances is very, very important. And this today's forum is one of them actually. But, so, but as a government, uh, we are doing uh, the same kind of online symposiums for uh, all the university people. And uh, the, its purpose is to share the impact uh, of the COVID-19 and highlighting the current issues and discuss the internationalization of universities. But uh, the, 
the important thing is this is to discuss what what is going to be and you know how what we can do for the new normal in higher education and the world so so envisioning a new image of higher education and sharing the ideas with the world is very very uh, important uh, we believe so uh, actually we did have already the kickoff webinar in june and we are going to have the uh, the online symposium in on september 30th and uh, we will have another symposium later but and uh, we will have this kind of symposium initiated by the top global university of global universities and for your uh, references uh, we took uh, emergency questionnaires uh, on the selected universities and the survey target was 50 universities and we took the questionnaires in june and the response rate was 100 percent so what the university is now uh, struggling for and what are they uh, looking for now well this the, the first question was what are the current issues in terms of internationalization of universities and each university could choose up to five and the biggest answer was the delay of projects due to the create as uh, secession of students and faculty exchanges and they all the most of them are seeing now that the development of a new project strategy for the post corona era is quite important and the another important thing here is the student safety and risk management well uh if you see the kind of world news uh quite uh there are quite many voices from the students that they are worried to go to go back to their campuses and some faculties especially older faculties are worried to accept uh their students back to the campus and having face-to-face -face classes so for the universities to get uh, started, restarted, and to get uh, to to have their education as much as possible normally, well, they need to consider the student safety and risk management, and they need to show how they their campus is safe and how they are treating well the the such a uh, COVID nineteen situation, and so. This is going to be uh, a huge issue for the university. And now this is a huge issue now for the universities to open up their campuses. And this is a, uh, about the financial uh, impact. But to compare to the universities in English speaking countries, but the tuition uh, in Japan, in Japanese university is uh, relatively much cheaper. However, so I thought, first of all, uh, maybe the financial, uh, financial impact is not that big but however in the period of june that we took this emergency questionnaire already 64 percent of the universities are telling me telling us that uh, they have a uh, they are facing financial difficulties the for instance uh, the real cases say that the decrease in revenue from housing fee by international students and cancellation of short programs and upon arrival of international students they need to secure a temporary housing for two weeks uh, for quarantine and the setting up an equipment for the remote classes and a scholarship for living. So for these things that the university has been kind of huge effort, putting huge efforts on uh, the how they are, you know, you will remodel their financial structure, especially in terms of the internationalization. And the next question was the need for reshaping internationalization. Well, more than 80% of the universities aim to change to blended uh, or hybrid programs, where they, they, now they are forced to move to online, no matter they like it or not, and no matter they are well doing or not doing, they have to now shift to the, uh, online education but they really want to have the hybrid not 100 percent purely online so the the this is a big big question how the quite big question now here is how do they secure the quality of learning so place more emphasis on the quality of learning is a the second second answer the second biggest answer and the third one is place more emphasis on the quality of learning rather than quantity especially in terms of the 
acceptance of the international students and also uh, also sending of the Japanese students. And this is a kind of a free answer, uh, free answer, uh, free answers uh, that we received from the universities, and the perception about this phenomena and also the, uh, the about the preparation for this its risk. And the, the important thing, uh, the the remarkable thing here is that the, the first one, uh, resetting the value of study abroad, is uh, many universities are mentioning about resetting the value of the study abroad. When I say local learning, it means like on-site learning uh, outside the country. So, so when they uh, introduce this kind of online education, how to, uh, how to secure the quality uh, of the education and the research is a huge uh, agenda for them. And also development of flexible curricula throughout online classes and also building networks to share the latest uh, information and good practice of each. And the up, also upskilling of the faculty and staff members in such and circumstances. So universities are kind of wondering these uh, matters and, and, and these things we, we need to share and uh, it's, it's gonna be very good to share these things. And let me introduce uh, good practices uh, from Japan. Uh, this is uh, COIL style education. Actually, we have been supporting this kind of uh, education program, inter-exchange inter program uh, since, since two or three years ago. And uh, the COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning Method. And uh, the, so students, and not only faculty, but the students join together and make a platform and uh, together online and discuss and do the kind of teamwork and co-working through online. And actual COIL program is, has a kind of set of both uh, the, actually the face-to-face -face program, like a real study, a short study abroad and the online program. But due to the COVID-19 now, all the COIL program is uh, forced to have only the online program. But any, at any rate, now this is a big, uh, very good practice and they're now spreading out among quite many Japanese universities for, for their international education. In conclusion, well, this is the question to myself and uh, how, how or to what extent do we need to reshape or remodel the internationalization in terms of education, hybrid of online and face-to-face? -face? Well, when people say that, it sounds very easy, but actually in a real, real case, I don't think it's that that easy. Uh, the faculty may have very kind of complex, complex system of the, the two maybe computers. I don't know, but 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 anyway, to what extent they want to introduce online into a one the, the series of courses or one series of uh, curriculum, and they need to refine study abroad. Quite many, people, quite many people say that remote study abroad or online study abroad or virtual study abroad in a context of inclusion or society 5.0, we, we call it in Japan. But, but what is the distinctive value of real study abroad is very important. So, so that when we talk about the, the remote study abroad, what, what is it? You know? You know, so I think, I think that, that's the biggest question. It's one of the big questions to me. And student subsidies after, with or after COVID-19 is very important. As I said in the previous slide, slides, well, risk management, especially uh, for health uh, at campus and in the program for sending our students is very important. And uh, the fairness is another issue. The learning opportunity for students with disabilities or financial difficulties is, is quite big. And the changes in the future concept we have more and more to consider the financial models, recruitment of international students, and housing, international partnerships for the risk dispersion, and domestic partnership for resource sharing, etc. But so, what only one single university, what only one single university can do is very limited. So it's very important to, first of all, share the experience and uh, challenges and good practices. But second uh, stage 
maybe we will see is to share the study resources or the, the educational resources among the universities. But what is important now is that internationalization itself is, itself is getting more important under such a period of time. And uh, such a partnership is very important. So today's theme is going back to the today's the theme, the reigniting international mobility through global partnership. I really uh, believe that this is a very good timing uh, to discuss this global partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you for your informative speech, Mr. Sato. After the next speech, we will provide feedbacks on the questions for Mr. Sato, so feel free to convey them through Zoom. So the next keynote speech is by Professor Dr. Masato Murakami, President of Shibata Institute of Technology. Dr. Murakami, would you start? Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm Sato Murakami, uh, president of Shibara Institute of Technology. I'd like to thank you for all the invited speakers and uh, all the participants. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome uh, talented individuals. Today, I will talk on uh, higher education Let me, let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, I will talk on higher education in a VUCA world. Then what does VUCA stand for? V, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. So everybody agrees that we live in a VUCA world. Then what can we do to survive in a VUCA world? The answer is very simple, education. Improve yourself and keep learning. I'm telling my student at SIT, through higher education here, you can acquire three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, the basics, and critical thinking skills, and deep insight and expertise in specific areas, and creativity, and flexibility. I am telling them, don't worry. You can survive in the VUC world through the education here at SIT. Let me go back to the history of higher education. In 1980s, rapid globalization and world economics occurred. Then the question is right. What is the most important thing to survive in a highly competitive global society? human resources who support the nation. Hence, the importance of higher education was recognized by world leaders. We know that collapse of education is the collapse of the nation. We should not stop education. Succeeding globalization in world economics, globalization in higher education occurred in 1990s. As a result, universities in the United States attract students from the world despite their high tuition fees. European students prefer to go to universities in the United States. The ministers of education from 29 European countries gathered in Bologna and they made a so called the Bologna Declaration in 1999. The essence of the declaration is it has put in motion a series of reforms needed to make European higher education more compatible, comparable, more competitive, and more attractive for Europeans and for students and scholars from other continents. The Bologna Declaration 
led to paradigm shift in higher education. That is, from what is taught to what is learned. We should place emphasis on what is learned by student through university education. So learning outcome of student is very important. That is a quality assurance of higher education. And now, global and diversity are keywords for higher education. There's a word by Anthony Bright, we need a new generation of engineers able to function in global teams, appreciating and respecting professional and cultural diversity. Then to nurture skills and the competencies needed for global engineer scientists, active learning is recommended or project-based learning. You can learn the structure of a car and how it works from a book, but you can't drive it, right? And Confucius, last word, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. That is the point of active learning. It is common for Japanese university to nurture your student through intensive long-term PBL or active learning. Small group teaching and discussion for third graders. Workshop. And graduate thesis studies for senior students. And master thesis studies for postgraduate students. These are the most effective PBL and unique to Japanese universities. So during coronavirus pandemic, we could resume research-based education for senior students, medical students, and PhD co-students because we're conducting small group teaching or self-directed research product. It's easy to avoid three Cs, credit places, close contact, and closed spaces with poor ventilation. During coronavirus pandemic, I told students and professors, you have to stay at home, but you can read papers, you can write papers and reviews, it's a good opportunity for you to look deeply into your research topic, including its impact on the society. And I also told them, mediocre researchers do lots of experiment and write few papers. Great researchers focus on key experiment and publish high impact research papers. You have to be great researchers. For undergraduate students, we offered online education during COVID-19 pandemic, as Professor Miyoshi mentioned. We could overcome technical difficulties through collaboration of faculty, staff, and students. We did real-time online education through Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams. We also provided online or demand, on-demand education that's learning via online channels with a real-time interaction. Professors provide learning material that students can access anytime. We also recommend flipped classroom online. Students learn class materials beforehand, and professors are not instructors at this time, but facilitated to encourage students to understand more through discussion and problem solving online. Well, these days, if you turn on TV, you see lots of people accuse us online teaching in the media. We must fight against misunderstanding about online education. Miss one, the quality of classes is lower. Number two, the quality of outcomes is less. Number three, online teaching will reduce the burden on faculty. Number four, Online students cannot interact with instructors or other students. Number five, grading will not be fair since cheating is more common in online courses. These are not true. We have to tell people misconceptions of online education. We can make quality assurance through online education. Then what about experiment? I just copied the slides from a website of Labster. It's a company dedicated to developing interactive lab simulations. Their experiment software they made gives students access to realistic lab experiences that will let them perform an experiment 
and practice their skills in a risk-free learning environment. We should introduce this type of uh, uh, distant experiment software or AR2. Well, now international mobility. I'm always telling my students, go over and see the world. And you will be surprised how diverse the world is. And experience is the best teacher. Well, these graphs are already shown by uh, Professor Miyoshi. Number of SIT students going abroad and international students coming to SIT kept increasing. But in 2019, due to the pandemic, 200 SIT students were forced to cancel their study abroad. And it may go down to zero in 2020. Number of international students, two. In 2019, virus pandemic caused 54 students to cancel coming to SIT. However, we can perform online international conferences or international call forum like this one. Anybody can attend the international meeting anytime, anywhere with low cost. And we can expect more participants participation of students in this type of online conferences. Second one, we can perform online international collaboration, like distance experiments. Collaborators can share experiment online, or we are thinking international collaborators can use experimental devices at SIT online, or vice versa. Number three, online global project-based learning, PBL. Um, we should make students feel personal contact as real as possible. For this, I want to propose avatar-based platform PBL. And some university have already installed avatar-based platform for this time, PBL. Well, I want to introduced words by Winston Churchill. A pessimist see the difficulty in every opportunity and optimists see the opportunity in every difficulty. We should be optimistic. Coronavirus crisis offers chance to update higher education. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Murakami. Now we'd like to provide some time for the first QA session. If you have any comments or questions, please send them us through Zoom. So from now on, Dr. Masahiko Tachibana from the SIT Center for Promotion of Educational Innovation will be the moderator for the QA session. Dr. Tachibana, can you begin whenever you're ready? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, ah. we can hear you. Okay. It seems that internet, internet, internet connection is not very well uh, for the time being, but uh, uh, it says that uh, my network bandwidth is lowering, so sorry. Uh, but um, as the, you know, uh, uh, as we have uh, asked you to uh, write uh, any questions in the chat uh, box, uh, so ma many of you uh, have uh, uh, made a very positive comments. Thank you very much, and so on. Uh, but uh, to there is a question for Sato so, uh, about COIL program. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. From yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the ministry point of view regarding the new normal of international partnership, uh, 
we agree that COIL is an important collaboration activity that needs to be encouraged. You mentioned about COIL programs between Japanese and U.S. universities. How can the extreme time zone differences issue be resolved? Can you also share some success stories from COIL programs? So uh, would you answer this question, Mr. Sato, please? Well, thank you very much uh, for asking. Well, actually the time difference is a huge uh, uh, challenge. <laughs> all, all the COIL universities, uh, especially doing the COIL between university, uh, between Japan and the United States. So it's not, it's not actually, it's not uh, uh, well fixed, I think. And all the, most of the people who are doing the COIL to tell me that the time difference is a big issue. but. Uh, Talking about the time difference, that actually, you know, we we, we don't have that that much time difference between the you know, other Asian countries within Asia, so it's going to be a very big opportunity, a good opportunity for the universities. Thanks. Well, sorry, I I can't, I can't you know, actually the time difference can't help. Uh, the, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sato. Uh, ma, uh, in the COIL uh, program, is there, the only participants are for the U.S. and the Japanese universities? No European I, I, universities. No, I, I don't think so. The COIL is uh, just a one uh, of the method. So, so as, uh -huh. uh, as if you, you have professors or the, the, the member of the university know how to do it, then you can do it mm -hmm. with any anybody in the world, and actually, the the coil partners is not limited to uh, the United States, but the most the selected university mm -hmm. have the partnership for coil with other regions mm -hmm. of the world. I see. Thank you very much. In my experience, that uh, if the European, you uh, American, and the Asian universities should have to mix up. Uh, it's very difficult to find that uh, right time, but uh, only for <laughs> Japan and the USA or only for Japan and Europe, or, uh, I mean, Asia and Europe, then uh, it must, uh, maybe uh, one side is uh, early morning, but uh, uh, the other side is uh, late in the evening, but uh, it can be possible to find the time, I suppose. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Uh, ah. Uh, my question is about COIL too. Uh, ah, thank you for, uh, 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 excuse me. Uh, wow. Uh, the, uh, question from Dr. Rabia. Uh, my question is about also COIL. Is it possible that a standardized is the COIL platform be developed which can be shared among all the partner universities. This question should also go to Mr. Sato, please. Okay, well, uh, actually for the COIL program, we, uh, we have one flagship university, which is a Kansai University, which is a private university in Osaka region. Well, this university uh, is the first uh, university to, to introduce the COIL program. And, uh, and actually, uh, under the reinvent uh, this uh, inter-university exchange pro project, we, we, we have been asking uh, to, to Kansai University to take a kind of leadership to spread out this COIL uh, system, COIL method. So uh, the, actually, they ma made a kind of association. Uh, if I remember correctly, the name is IIGE. Uh, IIG Association is now working on the, 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 the sharing the experience and the challenges of the COIL program with the worldwide. So maybe uh, you may be able to contact Kansai University to, to get to know more about and uh, maybe hopefully, you know, get into the, uh, the association. Okay, thank you very much again, Sat Mr. Sato. The next question is from uh, Ika Kutsiati Utami from uh, Erlinger University of Indonesia to uh, Professor Dr. Masato Murakami. How to provide supporting online learning environment for students so that 
They can build up their creativity and curiosity naturally, even from their own home. And what kind of learning material commonly provided for engineering students for that case? So would you answer this question, Professor Murakami? Well, uh, first of all, to prepare uh, the environment uh, for uh, online education, uh, we gave 60,000 yen to all the students. And they prepared uh, because uh, there are some uh, students who have not access to internet at home. So that is what we did in the first place. 60,000 yen is about uh, uh, $600, $600. <laughs> and uh, with this uh, support, they pre prepared the uh, internet environment at home. They can access uh, online education. So uh, we also prepared some uh, mobile PC so that uh, if they do not have uh, personal computers, we can give them those PCs. And we bought 250 uh, personal computers for this purpose in the beginning. And uh, we first started, probably we used uh, Zoom mainly, but uh, because of the heavy burden on the uh, internet on, on, and the system, uh, teachers uh, studied by themselves and uh, we did lots of uh, faculty development and staff development uh, uh, discussions and uh, we employed various various uh, methods to, to do uh, online education. So as I uh, showed in my slide, online education through Zoom or other sources and also on-demand uh, education that uh, uh, professors prepare uh, mainly videos on their lectures. And, but we asked the professors to interact with students afterwards. And uh, some of the uh, professors uh, did the flipped classroom. They prepared uh, uh, class material beforehand and the student to study those materials. And during online education, uh, teachers interact with students and working together on problem solving or introducing uh, 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 discussions and also uh, even some uh, uh, experiment online. Is this okay? Uh, thank you very much, Professor Murakami. Uh, in, if I might add some uh, experiences, uh, the uh, COVID under the COVID-19 situation, the classes might become kind of a flipped classroom because uh -huh. the professors uh, ask students to learn more before the class starts, and the class is dedicated for discussion or practice and so on. Now that's uh, so the materials can be a video or, or the handmade uh, uh, handouts ne, uh, uh, for, for students to learn before you, they got, come to the class. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So uh, the next question, and, and this might be the last question or one more. Uh, hi, my name is Rim Rietwerke, Windesheim University of Applied Sciences, Zwolle, the Netherlands. Lecturer and also international coordinator of the IT program. Thank you for the presentation. And <laughs> uh, looking for creative new options of studying abroad. We also think of developing an application 24 slash seven, expect for the weekend. Uh, would it be possible for us to join a coil consisting of SIT and one of your American partners? Three small teams of students, one team in each country could collaborate. Team one discusses their work at the end of the day to the team in Europe and team Europe does the same with the team in the US and that team on its turn with the Japanese team again. Ah, so this means uh, maybe uh, A versus B, B versus A, A, C and C versus A. Maybe, maybe this kind of a, a turnaround <laughs> program. This is the uh, proposal or idea from uh, Mr. Wim, uh, so how do you think about this question, uh, Mr. Sa okay. 
Well, I think this question is to President Murakami. That one. Well, okay. Uh, SIT is not participating in COIL project right now, but uh, you know the COIL project itself is easy to uh, to be in, installed in our education. So we have already started uh, some kind of online PBL or online interaction with uh, partner universities. So I think it's very easy to start COIL type interaction with SIT and uh, partner universities or any universities interested in COIL project with SIT. Okay. Thank you very yeah, much, yeah. Prof. Murakami. Uh, yes, uh, thank, uh, I, I, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this might be the uh, last question, actually. Does me, uh, from Isabella, Prof. Isabella from SIT, does Mix the thinks about encouraging a module lecture style that Japanese universities can provide to students from all around the world on demand in post-corona times. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> would you well, uh, respond to this? Yes, actually, <laughs> I'm not sh sure what exactly this module lecture style mean, but uh, mm. what we see uh, as a Ministry of Education is that uh, the, the, you know, no, no matter you like or not, we now uh, use online, and we found out that the good uh, points, so, you know, have a, a good points of online education actually, uh, in reality. So, so, mm -hmm. so using online to a certain extent, but but at the same time, the face the good point of the face to face education shall shall be there, still, you know, still there. So then we we should we should mm -hmm. respect the mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. advantage of the face to face education as well. So the the hybrid education is one of the way that we may see and we may uh, consider you know how uh, our regulation or rule uh, or you know subsidy programs shall fit into this kind of reality uh, in the future reality okay thank you mr sato and uh, i have to announce that mr sato uh, uh, will uh, going to leave uh, this uh, seminar af soon after this. So thank you very much, Mr. Sato. And uh, we will take uh, one minute or two minutes break and uh, restart the session at 4.30. So if you want to go to a private room, please do it <laughs> immediately. And uh, I hope to come back at uh, 6.30. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Okay, so let's begin the second half of this event. Uh, for the second half, we'd like to present three speeches from roundtables rep representing professors from SIT and our partner universities in Thailand and Poland. The first speaker from Japan is Professor Dr. Masahiro Inoue, Vice President of SIT. Dr. Inoue, can you begin? Sure. Good afternoon. I'm Masahiro Inoue. Uh, Vice President of Shibaura Institute of Technology. I will talk about uh, transformation and engineering education in the COVID-19 pandemic and the future prospect. May I share my screen? Okay. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, most universities in the world switched to online classes. Uh, Shibaura Institute of Technology also uh, switched classes all online. I'd like to share the result of the online classes. Okay. It's learning outcomes of distance learning. It's a result of the teacher's survey in August 2020, just after the spring semester. The question is how these learning outcomes of distance learning compare with those of face-to-face -face classes. There are three categories of the classes, lecture, exercise, and experiment. Okay. Um, yellow green is a distance learning better, a green is the same, and the blue describes face-to-face -face classes better. It shows that distance learning has resulted in higher learning outcome in lectures. During the COVID-19, we SIT have initiative to improve distance learning. I'll share the, our initiative. Okay. First one is the student centers guarantees learning opportunity even if this COVID-19 pandemic and improve the student satisfaction, maintain communication among students as well as our faculty member. And inclusive education, even the handicapped, handicapped student and the mental health. Second one is guarantees learning outcomes. Plan, do, check, act, or cycle is very important. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Hey, yes, we can. Okay, I continue. Mm -hmm. Third one is a pedagogy. It's very important how to instruct educational method. Select and develop an appropriate teaching method for online classes, where it's very important. Blended learning, flipped classes is a very nice pedagogy for online classes. And fourth one is a collaboration. Share experience and knowledge and in the faculty and the staff and the student. We initiate um, several workshops uh, during COVID-19, more than 10 workshops implemented in Zoom meeting. Quality of the distance learning improved very much during this um, workshop. And the technology and the environment, online education need technology. We improve the online classes by applying the cutting edge technologies. Okay. We have transmission and engineering education. Its implementation is spring semester 2020. There are several examples. First one is a full online flipped classroom and large scale online project based learning. Online PBL with international virtual mobility, which develop an international virtual team, a virtual exchange and inclusive education with ethic and artificial intelligence. I'll show you first one, pedagogy. 
pedagogy in COVID-19 pandemic, and it will apply after COVID-19. Uh, blended learning, flipped classroom is a very nice pedagogy, and we implement full online flipped classroom to develop active autonomous learners and facilitate communication among the student. It's a TV called flipped classroom. It's composed of the on-demand learning and face-to-face -face active learning. In on-demand learning, students acquire knowledge and learn at student own pace. There is no time and space constraint. In you know, face -face sensei, could you proceed the slide? I think this slide is old one. Okay, I'll see again. A Philip classroom? Yes. Okay. Yes, now it's okay. Okay, it's a composed of the on demand running and the face to face active running. Yeah. And whole face to face active running use and retain knowledge. It's composed of the cooperative running, a peer teaching, so that they have discussion in this and face to face active running. But we cannot have the face to face active running in this pandemic. So we switch to the full online flipped classroom. This one, flipped, full online flipped classroom in spring semester. On demand lecture is the same, and we have a simultaneous bi directional class. At first, a teacher gave a short lecture and the Q&A, and then the student split to the breakout room. 106 students break to the 46 three room, small room, and the four students work together, appear teaching a discussion and exercise, active learning. And we received the question by chat. It improved on communication among the students. The learning outcomes have been improved for this lecture. And the technology and the environment in COVID-19 pandemic, and it can be applied after COVID-19. Online project-based learning, online PBL with international virtual mobility. Here, large-scale PBL is before COVID-19. Last year, we have a big uh, classroom, three classroom for the student, 500 student, uh, split into the 46 small group. 14 teachers instruct this big PBL. But we cannot have this VR classroom in COVID-19 pandemic, so we switch to the online. Here, large scale online PBL 2020 in the COVID 19 pandemic. It's a virtual classroom, three classrooms in crowd, and one team or teacher, teacher communicate to each other and prepare material, assess the student. So we implement four teams in Microsoft Teams a crowd service. 500 students are assigned to small conference room, it's a channel. And they have the web conference and chat and collaborative file editing and the share file. Students can discuss after class hours in crowd. The learning outcomes have been improved. This uh, environment can be used virtual international mobility. Uh, we have already an online PBL and international virtual mobility in online uh, environment. Last May to July, we implement the multidisciplinary PBL collaborating with a local industry and the local community. 
we invite four students from KMUTD, King Monkey University Technology, Tonbury, Thailand. 80 Japanese students at SIT and four KMUT students work together and solve local a problem. It's a one the online PBL and international virtual mobility. And the second one is a cross-culture engineering project. It's a cooperative effort by Novadilis Boa, uh, Shibaura Institute of Technology and KMUTT, uh, which multidisciplinary PBL held in the virtual last uh, July and August. It was implemented last year, real uh, PBL in Portugal, Lisbon, but this year we have virtual PBL. Two days ago, Suranari University Technology initiated IoT PBL. Uh, we SIT send four students for this PBL. We have already an online PBL with virtual uh, mobility. I show a very interesting picture, a virtual team development in online PBL. It's a result of multidisciplinary online PBL with international virtual mobility. Uh, four students from KMUTT joined this PBL. A student team developed uh, this period from forming stage, storming stage, norming stage, performing stage. First stage, there is a, uh, no good interaction among the student. Storming stage, some conflict. Norming stage, slightly alignment of the direction and the performing stage, a good team made in this team. It's very nice opportunity for student, for future career. Scientists and engineers will have this kind of virtual team environment in international business opportunity. It's a, a virtual opportunity for student. Next one, the hybrid international mobility in COVID-19 pandemic and after. Real and virtual hybrid student mobility. We'd like to propose recurrent education and graduate school education based on global industry academic collaboration uh, using hybrid international mobility. This picture, for example, there is a several university in Asian technical network. Each university uh, offered course cluster, for example, IoT robotics course cluster, AI data science cluster, digital transformation cluster, management cluster. We share these cluster online or face to face. We invite industry lecturer, industry student here. We can implement this by hybrid classroom and blended learning online or face to face. And student or working person received the micro credential. Micro credential accumulation will lead to the degree. Finally, virtual mobility can enhance real mobility. And but virtual mobility will not replace real mobility. Meet feet touch and eat in different culture, it is indispensable. Go hybrid, go branded. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Inoue. Now for the second speaker from Thailand is Associate Professor Dr. Pornapit Darsawan, Vice President for Internationalization at King Mongkut's University of Technology, Thumburi, Thailand. Dr. Darsawan, can you begin whenever you're ready? I think your mic is muted. Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, SIT for inviting me to be a part of the uh, round table. 
Um, I think from the start of this session, we have heard that many people kept mentioning about the, uh, the, incre the, the decreasing of mobility. And Professor Munakami also talked about the importance of, uh, of, um, um, of mobility that we, the students can learn things on, on their own and hand, in, an, in a hands-on, um, they will have an, a hands-on experience. So each year, we will have students going out, about 700 students going out for the, inter, for the international um, mobility. And we also accept students to come at KGT as well, around 600 or something. Uh, but after COVID, we all know that this activity is impossible, but still it's very important. If the students do not have the chance to meet with other people, um, they will lack this, uh, this experience. So what I would like to share with you today is something which is not related to classroom learning, but it is as important as classroom learning experience, which is uh, extracurricular activity. At KTT, we use, uh, we use OBE or outcome-based education as an educational philosophy. And in order to foster desirable outcomes, we think about the experience in class and experience out of class. So uh, international experience is something that we are trying to promote because we know that the students who, who have the chance to um, to, 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 to have this, activity, uh, this experience is going to develop some intercultural experience, intercultural competence, and at the end, we would like them to be global citizens. But as we know that uh, international experience is very expensive, not all of the students will, will have the chance to, to have this experience. So the alternative to international experience is internationalization at home, which we are trying to promote it as well. Uh, can I just uh, give the definition of internationalization at home so that you, all, you will all understand it? Internationalization at home has been defined as the purposeful integration of international and intercultural dimensions into the formal and informal curriculum for all students within domestic learning environments. And International at Home comprises activities that help students develop international understanding and intercultural skills. So there are diversity of activities that constitute internationalization at home, such as curriculum and programs, teaching learning processes, extracurricular activities, connecting with local cultural and ethnic groups and research or scholarly activities. So what I'm going to share to you, with you today is the extracurricular activities. Internationalization is one of the strate strategic goals of uh, my university. And we expect that the students will be able to communicate in English effectively so that they will have tools, which is a universal, universal language, to contact people from other culture. And we hope that intercultural competence can be developed if we have the chance to, if the students have the chance to, ex to exchange views with other people. And as I told you that in the normal situation, we have around 1,000 students on campus, 350 are regular students, and 600 something, are, uh, uh, they, they, they came for short term visits from two weeks until eight months or something. Um, if the students study with the uh, regular students, they have the chance to contact them if they study in the same courses or they, they go to the same labs or do extracurricular activity together. But if not, it means that they have no chance to communicate or to contact or uh, with those uh, regular students. So normally when we have the uh, of inbound students, we are trying to match the inbound students with, with uh, our Thai students. We don't want the inbound students to come as a group and then study on their own. So the inbound students who come to us, they would be linked with uh, students in class or uh, activities outside class. 
Another thing that we are trying to develop is uh, in the extracurricular activity is body pro the body program. I know that the body program uh, has been used in many universities. For us, uh, each year we, there are about 60 to 50 students who apply to be buddies. And the outcome of the buddy program is that first we want the students who apply to be buddies to improve their English proficiency and other competencies such as leadership, adaptability, management, thinking skills. So these are the, the skills or these are the, um, the competence that we want them to develop when they come to the buddy program. The second outcomes that we would like them to get is that they have to be, there would be more confidence to interact with foreigners. The third one is uh, they can promote image and increase reputation of the universities when they meet with international visitors, scholars and students, because we ask the, buddy, the buddies to, uh, to, to take the visitors to go around the campus in order to introduce the campus to them. And another thing is that this is for the international student. We, because we want the buddy to help international student to settle down easily and quickly. So when the international students come, we have buddy pair with them and then take them out to, uh, to do shopping or, or to go and then find the uh, accommodations. And the last one is that uh, the outcome of the buddy program is we want to encourage internationalization on campus. So in the, uh, when the students uh, apply to be buddies, we give them some training program. In the training program, we do it on campus and out of campus. On campus, we give them knowledge about history, intercultural understanding, personality development, and then we have the buddy from the previous batch to share their experience. We, have, we also provide three-day trip out of campus because we would like them to do CSR because we want the students to have some voluntary um, mindset as well. And then they would learn, and then they also learn history of Thailand because they have to be able to explain the history of Thailand to the visitors. So each year, if the students apply to be buddies, they will get up to 300 hours to, uh, to use English to contact uh, international students and international visitors. So we think that 300 hours per academic year is, is, is quite enough for them to be able to use English in the real world and then to, to be able to interact with other people. And when the, then when we have the COVID-19, we still have buddies and we still want our buddies to have more or less the same experience during COVID-19. That's why we are trying to find the activities that they can still be able to foster the, uh, the attributes that, that, that I mentioned. During this time, uh, we still have the mobility program, the virtual mobility program, which, which is called remote internship program. In remote internship program, even though there are fewer students, because we have four bachelor's degree students from France, we have eight bachelor's degree students from University of Toronto in Canada, and one master's degree student from another one from France who attached with the um, with uh, field robotics, Institute of Field Robotics. Each group had to spend time with us of at least 15 weeks. So it means that they have enough time to, to, to do activities with us. We are trying to give them more or less the same experience as if they are physically on campus. So we issued letter of acceptance for them. We give them student ID. Uh, as if they were uh, KMTT students. Uh, we give them an internet account, and then we also offer Thai language and culture class because we know that uh, in the old days or be before uh, COVID-19, any students who come to KMTT will have this 
things that I mentioned. And we don't want to deprive the opportunity that uh, the uh, remote internship uh, students who, who are engaged in remote internship program, uh, they will not have that. That's why we, we try to offer everything which is more or less the same as usual. So what I'm going to give you as an example today is the, the program that six specialist degree students from the University of Toronto who came and attached with School of IT. The students have to meet with the project manager, uh, uh, Dr. Jonathan, two times per week to discuss the project. In addition, they have, they have to interact with other people in the same lab so, uh, so that they can work with, so, so other people can also interact with the students. And then we offer eight hours of uh, time, uh, language and culture. We ask eight buddies to, to think about how to offer uh, the, Thai culture, the Thai language and, the, and Thai culture. So the buddies design materials which aim to help the interns, the eight interns know about Thailand, know about Kenichi tea, and also they can, they can exchange other elements as well. So they can play games together and share some experiences. The IA officers, act as a person who oversee and uh, to, to, to over, oversee the activities and also to approve whether the content in the Thai language or in the culture is in the culture session is okay or not. Normally if it is pre-COVID, the students who come to Thailand and have to take a uh, Thai language, they would take courses at the School of Liberal Arts but we find that uh, this is an opportunity for the buddies to be able to exchange or to, to use uh, English to interact with uh, the, uh, the, the uh, foreign students. That's why we, we change uh, the activities. Uh, there are challenges and the main challenges, the main challenge is the time zone because we talk about the difference in time zone when we offer like coil or other thing. Um, the buddies had to offer the session at 9 p.m. in Bangkok time or 10 a.m. in Toronto, but the session is not that long. It's just only one and a half hours. So in this way, it is not that, that, that bad. Uh, they, they're still okay and they still enjoy doing this. I, pre I prepared the three minute video for you to, to take a look and see what happened in the in the Thai class, Thai language class, and the uh, the culture class, so you can see uh, what happened, and all the materials come from the students. So I would share screen for you to to see. Just only three minutes. Um. Next, I will teach you the vocabulary about how to give direction. Tong pai. Can you see it? Tong pai. Can, can, can you see it? Or not? Yeah, tong yes, we can, see, yes, it, we can see, see it. We can see it. Liao sai. Liao sai. Liao sai is to live. Liao hua. Liao hua. Liao hua is to like. So I will start the game. Oh. <laughs> Company, you come on, gas station, true or false? Yeah. Company, you come on, station, true or false? True is blue and false is red. It's false because you can lang is mean behind, but in this case, it you don't come. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. So, who is the winner of this game? What <laughs> are Me. Uh. 
uh, today our section will be about eight things you should know in Thailand and three, three belief things in KMUTT. Okay, this one is about the rainbow. Um, rainbow is also becoming one of Thai people's belief. If pointing at rainbow, the finger will be shortened. Um, the actual reason is that to prevent the children from getting sick from being in the rain, since the rainbow usually appear after raining, and pointing finger without being careful, since they might uh, unintentionally poke their friend's face or eyes. Uh, our class is finished. So, uh, uh, can you tell, tell us something? I thought it was awesome. Thank you so much for teaching us all of this. It was great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed like every last bit and just like learning Thai as well as uh, I like how you guys incorporated the Thai culture into the lessons too. That was really interesting. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with the games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also found it super fun. And you guys are always being really funny, so <laughs> good. Can we um, take a pic some pictures together? Yeah! <laughs> Thank you for everything, guys. Thank you for everything, too. Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the example uh, because I can see that there are outcomes that have been achieved from encouraging the of eight buddies to join the uh, this activity. The first thing is that uh, buddies exercise their creativity to design the materials and how to teach their friends. They share their own culture, which from the perspective of intercultural competence, it is considered as a path to develop intercultural competence because in order to develop intercultural competence, we should understand our own culture so we can share it with other people. The second outcome that I think uh, we, can, we have achieved is that the buddies had the opportunities to use English in the real world uh, because they have to explain, answer questions, not just read from slides. So uh, they don't know what, what, the, uh, what their friends from Canada is going to ask them. And the third outcome which I think that we have achieved is that the buddies come from different departments at KMGT. So they learn to work as a team, exercise their leadership when doing this task together. And the last one is getting to know new friends. Uh, they still contact each other via line group because uh, Dr. Jonathan is trying to arrange every single thing as if they were in Thailand, including uh, set up the, the line group. And today they still uh, contact each other uh, via line group. And if the COVID-19, uh, if, if we are lucky enough uh, that the students, that the student can go on with this program, they'll be able to come back, to come to KMTT and then do the rest of the, uh, of the online, uh, no, no, not the online, the rest of the internship uh, physically at KMTT. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Darsawan. Okay, the third speaker from Poland is Professor Dr. Janusz Schmidt, your Therm Committee President and the head of the Department of Fundamental Internet Connection is stable now, so you can see your <laughs> yeah. Thanks to your cooperation, I think it's good now. And uh, I already have uh, one question from uh, Vijaya Martokusmo uh, from ITP Indonesia. Uh, Professor, in a way, thank you for your interesting presentation. In the challenging period of COVID-19, could you probably share how one can guarantee that student can learn engineering properly if they have less experiences in doing practices in the labs or fields? To what extent do hybrid and blended methods help? 
Mm, that's an interesting question. But uh, in a way, Sensei, would you respond to uh, oh, yes. Prof. Vijaya? Yes, yes, it's a big challenge, I think. And uh, um, we have experienced uh, a lecture, exercise, and the laboratory or experiment. Experiment is very, very hard to execute in online. But we can use uh, this branded method, branded method in video or recording, how to uh, work in the laboratory, how to proper treatment, and then the limited time of the face-to-face -face laboratory or experiment is feasible for in pandemic. I can, we can share the uh, recorded or material and before the laboratory or experiment execution in the face-to-face. -face. We'd like to, um, to promote this kind of the, um, on-demand material for the experiment. And the Professor uh, Murakami, Vice President of the SIT, uh, proposed a uh, virtual reality or uh, uh, argument reality experience for experiment is very nice and uh, challenging and the uh, way of the take a course mm, especially on the experiment we'd like to go to the branded learning whole experiment thank you very much so you know essentially do you think uh, the the his question the uh, how one can guarantee that student can learn engineering properly if they have less experiences in doing practices in the labs of peace. Do, how, how is uh, your uh, answer to this particular part of the question? But, I mean, is it the blended or hybrid learning is uh, effective enough? Yeah, it's effective because um, blended learning is uh, student can their own pace so the repeatedly learn the content of the blended learning. So it's universal for um, talented student or mm. not so talented and um, <laughs> beginning talent beginning student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Students can study their own pace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you very much. And uh, uh I could not see any more question in the chat box, but uh, we still have a few minutes time. So anybody can, uh, you can also uh, raise your hand or just turn on your mic and uh, ask a question to any of the three speakers. Or uh, as uh, Professor Murakami, the president of SIT is still online. so. If you have questions to Prof. Murakami, it's also welcome. Oh, no, no, thank you. Uh, a new question. Uh, I'm Ibrahim Gambo from University Technology Malaysia. Uh, uh, a question to SIT President Murakami, okay. Uh, considering the public risk perception on the inequality and bias in the online teaching and learning, and while it's logical to expect the postgraduate and research students to be able to work more independently and from a distance, how do we make undergraduate and science subjects, uh, specifically mathematics, to make the students experience and learning in interactive and engaging? How does the universities provide the lecturers the extra time or compensation to engage the engineering students more? How can the lecturers can convince students that they can have better experience as face to face. So uh, would you respond to this question, uh, Prof Murakami? Well, I, I, I think uh, Tachibana Sensei, what well, Inoue Sensei can answer these questions. Well, uh, we're doing online education, right? And yes. uh, well, there are several options mm -hmm. uh, how, how to make uh, online education. And uh, Tachibana Sensei just mentioned about the flipped classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are thinking to shift to flipped classroom uh, in the near future, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, uh, mathematics or other basic subject. Mm -hmm. So uh, students learn class material beforehand, and during the class 
time online, uh, uh, teachers can work as a kind of uh, uh, not instructor, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, encourage student to work on the uh, problem solving or project uh, based learning. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, uh, so uh, before uh, uh, asking uh, Prof uh, you know where to answer this question, uh, I would like to comment that uh, on his uh, uh, second question, how can the lecturers can convince students that can have better experience as face to face um, i i don 't think uh, it cannot be better or worse you know uh, maybe the online education uh, gives a different kind of uh, experience to students and it's it can be also effective to let students convince that uh, they can learn uh, uh, the right thing i i think but uh, uh, for mathematics um, uh, so in, uh, to make the students experience and learning interactive and engaging how does the universities provide the lecturers the extra time or compensation to, um, Actually, many professors feel that uh, uh, they have to spend more time to, and make, make kind of a self-sacrifice to, to prepare the good lecture. It's actually the problem for lecturers. And also the um, uh, increased number of afflict-like classes, uh, students have to learn and dedicate more time on their preparation to the uh, classes. So, it's a burden for both sides, I suppose. Uh, but, uh, but the outcome from the, that kind of a, you know, uh, learning experience would be a rather active one from, uh, for students. And uh, uh, it's, so it's kind of a, you know, uh, uh, a bit different from the face-to-face -face kind of a, uh, Education. That's my uh, kind of uh, uh, opinion on this uh, uh, question. But how do you think, uh, Professor Inoue? Okay, I think um, distance learning and online learning, students uh, make more autonomous or active learner, independent learner. And students should be autonomous learner in future in future career. So. It is a big challenge for students, but the students need to be more autonomous, mm. not just active. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Inoue. And, uh, 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 and uh, Ms. Uh, Prof. Ibrahim, Ibrahimo said, uh, thank you so much for your responses, and thank you very much. Uh, now it's uh, uh, it's uh, time to close the Q and A session for mm -hmm. session two, uh, and uh, so I would like to pass this uh, uh, video to Hori Guchisan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tashibana, and thank you all for question, all the questions and comments. So at the end of this forum, we'd like to invite Professor Hiroyuki Ishizaki, the head of Malaysia's satellite office of SIT, to, to, to provide some closing remarks. Professor Ishizaki, can you begin? Okay, thank you for your introduction. And first of all, I would like to show my deepest appreciation to all the participants, all the organizers, and uh, the uh, distinguished guest speakers, Mr. Sato and President Murakami, and Dr. Unions, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Shumi, uh, Dr. Pranamit. So, and uh, all the participants and the Shibaura coordinators. So this is a wonderful opportunity regardless of the locations. So now, so we are facing a big problem. We cannot travel. Actually, I'm in Malaysia, but even I cannot go back to Japan and Shibaura could not host this event in Japan. So we all miss the participants. 
But in the meantime, let's take a look at the bright side. So now this year we have ATU net session for three consecutive months, three times of June, uh, July, August, and September. So now we have more chances to hang out with uh, online basis. So now it's a preparation for the, uh, the next year because it may take maybe a six months or even one, one another year so that we can travel again. But in order to, st uh, before starting such kind of travel, we still have a time to prepare for the, the, for the networking. So after this, let's have a networking session to prepare well for the, the restart of the real travel. So now, as Professor Murakami said, so education is always a solution for the difficulties. So we can see that uh, we as an optimistic people, we can see the opportunities inside the difficulties. Once again, thank you for or thank you all for participating in this wonderful event. And so I hope we will see you in Japan in the very near future. Thank you very much. And we have a networking session from uh, 5.30. So if you are attending the party, uh, the networking session, please stay online. Putting some please. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Ishizaki. So now it's time to conclude the ATU Net Virtual University Presidents Forum 2020. By continuing the strong cooperation between ATU Net member institutions, we're honored to be committed to collaborate for the future prosperity for all universities and institutions. Finally, we'd like to ask you to answer the questionnaire from the link in the chat box. Please feel free to add any comments or additional questions. This will help us to improve future events like this one. So to all of our ATU Net members, thank you for your strong support in making this forum a reality. We will be ending the Facebook Live session soon, but we will have an online network networking session for ATU Net members coming up. People who are invited to the networking session, please stay connected by Zoom. Again, thank you very much for participating, participating this event and hoping to see everybody face to face, face to face in the post COVID-19 world. Stay safe and well. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>